They refuse to follow the law while you do. That's why more kids are being shot in schools completely defenseless than an army ranger out in the battlefield. <laughs> It's always hard when you deal with a topic like this where there's a shooting, but it's the news, and unfortunately, issues are politicized before the bodies are even cold. So, uh, my question of the day, this is for everybody out there, if you're on YouTube, comment, or at S. Crowder, at Not Gay Jared, am I just looking for a silver lining, uh, or does everyone else also feel in the air that the gun control movement is largely dying? Kind of like the, the pussy hats and the hands up, don't shoot. I think in the age of information online, it, it just can't hold up. And I'm seeing that with the recent Santa Fe shooting uh, for a few reasons. So there are top five reasons or signs, I think, that the gun control movement today is dying. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's move on here, because it's been a very different very different narrative right after yeah. uh, Santa Fe than, say, Parkland. Number one, the re number one reason here is because a revolver and a shotgun were used, right? Yeah. In the latest Santa Fe shooting, not, not, not only not an assault weapon, not only not a 9 millimeter carbine with a high-capacity magazine, not only not a semi-automatic handgun, but a revolver and a shotgun. No law would have stopped this aside from a complete gun ban, period. There's nothing. I mean, this is one of those issues that from the, they're going, we're not coming after your revolvers and shotguns. They almost advocated shotguns. You don't need an AR-15. It's harder to aim, it's harder to use, and in it's fact, like you don't need 30 rounds to protect yourself. Really? Buy a shotgun. <laughs> Buy a shotgun. He's paid by Big Mossberg. Yeah. So the number <laughs> two top. reason. There you go is uh, the term assault weapons, and you see this with Santa Fe, is now being swapped for other terminology. That pisses me off. Combat weapon, I yeah. saw from Charles Blow at the New York Times. <laughs> Using this, we're talking combat-based weapons, I've heard. So now they move from assault weapons because it, we are so far removed, pragmatically from assault weapons, but the only common sense gun control legislation they wanted to push, right? I mean, there's a common sense gun control legislation. We don't need assault weapons out there, but that's not what it's about. If you go read this, this column that was trending, which was very bizarre, by the way, enough is enough from Charles Blow at, at the New York Times, only had like, dozens of retweets and Dozen. interactions. He said, this has made me a single issue voter. Okay, well, this is my question to you. You're a single issue voter, Santa Fe, revolver and shotgun. What common sense gun reform are you pushing for? Unless it's an all out ban. We did this, by the way. Yeah, we have B-roll of this video that we did a long time ago where we asked people to pick out what an assault weapon was. Yeah. And no one w was able to successfully pick no. it out. So, uh, and that brings us to number three, uh, a reason that I think, I, you feel it. I don't know if you feel, again, do you feel it in the air that it's very different now, right after Parkland and you had David Hogg and his Breakfast Club post? <laughs> no more of that. The, number three is the liberal overreach, the far left yeah. overreach. They've tipped their hand by praising far, far left policies that go far beyond any kind of a, uh, an assault weapons bet. Here you go, hear from them. We know that other countries in response to one mass shooting have been able to craft laws that almost eliminate mass shootings. Like and Great Britain. Britain. Almost. Australia. This is why the NRA puts up videos that try to scare Americans. They go to emotions. They go to fear. You know, uh, people want to take away your guns. Nobody wants to take away people's guns. We just don't want to be any different than Canada or Australia or Great Britain. Okay, well, just in case you were confused, in Australia, they literally took away They literally took away <laughs> yes. It's like, people are afraid that we want to do exactly what Australia did, but we should just do exactly what Australia did. Buy a shotgun. No, <laughs> damn it, he's still there. <laughs> Go away, Joe. Gun statistics is number four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The simple gun statistics by themselves are a reason, and the fact that people can Google them and find them so readily available. Remember when they said that the NRA wanted to block the CDC research? They said it was a gun right. The gun lobbyists, they want to block research. No, 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 no. Actually, we want it out there as much as possible. So this was up there in Washington Post, and Charles Blow was linking to it in his article, where they tout a 12% rise in gun deaths. And we've yeah. talked about this. This is important. Gun deaths. Word deaths being key. Not gun murders, gun deaths. Right. But then they go and tip their hand with a negative slant. And this is where we're just reading the same stat and just saying it a different way, where they say, well, there's also been a 30% increase in defensive use of firearms. There's also been a 30% <laughs> increase in defensive use of That's firearms. A good <laughs> this means people are more able and opting to defend themselves and are preventing crimes from being done to them than ever before. If you just contrasted the totals, right, and don't, don't take into account that a significant portion of those 12% increase in gun deaths include criminals getting iced through defensive use of firearms. If you see a 30% increase in self-defense, Right? How, how, how many rapes were stopped? Hashtag me too. How many muggings were stopped when we talk about a victim culture? How many Black Lives Matter were they were able to protect themselves? Here's a good example of a clip that was making the rounds of a woman protecting herself in a mugging. Let's, let's roll this. And here you go. Guy comes up, woman with her kids. She pulls out a gun. 
Like, Boom. Gone. Gone. So we're watching the same footage. This is a great example where you're not going to find common ground if you watch that and you go, oh, the horror. No, we're watching the same foot. That is female empowerment. Yeah. The statistical alternative to that is being raped and left for dead in an alley. Not in this case because it's broad daylight. Here's a stat that, that our brilliant researcher Reg found. Yeah. Uh, it's every now and then I see a new statistic that gives me chills. Yeah. Uh, it sends shivers down my spine. And I don't mean that in the Chris Matthews tingle down my leg when uh, Barack Obama became president. I mean, actually, I just it, it becomes chilling. Unarmed women have rapes against them completed. So I mean successfully completed in 48% of the cases of an attack. Okay, For women who use guns against the attacker, that percentage drops to 0.09%. Wow. Go check that out at ResearchGate. So think of this. If there were any other tool, what people say, we need to stop politicizing it and stop just trying to play the blame game. Okay, if there were any other tool, policy, or proposal on the table that could make it 543 plus times more likely that a woman could make it out of a conflict without being raped, over 500 times of a higher likelihood that you will not get raped if you have a firearm in that conflict, wouldn't everyone support it? Yeah. And the left and the right? Buy a shotgun. No! <laughs> Damn it! And put it in your purse. Oh. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just carry it around. <laughs> he just thinks women are carrying around clown car purse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Fire it in the air! The statistical realities are so undeniable that we get into the realm of conjecture before we actually dis discuss the statistics. And that's why I think this is dying right now, because obviously people have anecdotal experiences. As you see now, you're going to have more of those with a 30% increase in defensive use of the firearms to reflect what we have known statistically to be true this entire time. Speaking of which, this is number five, and I think a, a, a big reason and the biggest of all, it's glaring. You might say, why didn't you get to this sooner? Because it's, this is the grand finale. An undeniable constant. That's the number five here. When you look at all these mass shootings, 97% of mass shootings occurred in gun-free zones. Right? Why, why can somebody just as easily kill 10 people with a revolver and a shotgun as someone can kill with an AR-15? And th 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 just to give you another example of this, Whoopi Goldberg, Again, saying the same thing in a different way, not realizing how fundamentally unintelligent it sounds. Here was her today. I guess I should let this sink in for a second. After Friday's high school shooting in Texas, more American students have died from gun violence in 2018 than U.S. soldiers in combat. Why? What's the fundamental difference? What is the difference between, all right, line up the students in a classroom, close the door, it doesn't matter if I have an AR-15, a shotgun revolver, or African throwing knives, I can do what I want with you, versus, I don't know, a Marine or a Ranger. Why is it that much more likely that someone in a school could be shot, shot, shot like ducks in a row? The soldiers can shoot back, Whoopi. It sounds like one of the, uh, yeah, you, you think there's a lot of gun control going on in the battlefield? Nary, nary an assault rifle to be found. I think that we have reached a tipping point here where people now with this, this is why they have to handle this very differently. It still is amongst the most deadly school shootings that we've seen, right? Same reason they didn't cover Sutherland Springs, which was far more deadly than Parkland because what did we have? Bad guy, shoot, he was killed by a good guy with an AR-15. And in this case, we have a bad guy who did not use an assault weapon. We have a bad guy who reflects the statistical likelihood that it doesn't matter what he uses or what kind of gun laws you enact, 97% of shootings are still going to occur in gun-free zones. And then that lends itself to the new statistic that there is a 30% increase in defensive uses of firearms, which of course decreases your chances of being raped and of course increases your overall chances of living in a polite and streamlined and overall society that is quote-unquote desirable. That's a quote-unquote from myself. We've turned the tables on Al Gore and used the internet to our advantage. If you like this video, subscribe by hitting the subscribe button or the notification bell next to it because subscribing isn't enough. Watch one of these other videos and, uh, you know, listen, you can, you can stick around. You don't have to. But here's the thing. The fact that you're still listening to me saying stick around, as I say stick around and you're sticking around, ah, we just added another ad. You just made me feel more sense.